Good evening. Welcome to Trinity Baptist Church for our Christmas Eve service. We're so glad you've chosen to tune in. And we're making this service available to you for the whole day and throughout Christmas if you would like to share with your family the communion at home. What we'll do tonight is have a time of sharing scripture and then we'll all come to the table a few minutes and we will share the Lord's Supper together. So if you have the elements that you want to use at home, some sort of bread or cracker, some drink, juice or something, you can gather that and have that ready. Or you can use the kits that we have available in our airlock that we've given out throughout this season. And it has the little self-contained Lord's Supper kits in there. You're welcome to use whatever you want to. Also, toward the end of the service, as we traditionally do here at Trinity for our Christmas Eve service, we'll sing Silent Night. Taylor will lead that and sing it. I'll mouth the words behind him. But you're welcome to sing that at home or wherever you are. And then I will, before that, invite us to break. If you have the glow sticks, you can break those and we'll have that light. Or you can have a candle at home if you choose. And you can use that. And wherever you are, I hope that we will know that together, in our own ways, we are taking the Lord's Supper on Christmas Eve, and we are lifting high the light of the world. Thank you for being with us tonight, and may you have a very blessed and Merry Christmas. As we gather for worship, this is the time we light the last candle on our Advent wreath. The light is beginning brighter, even as the days are beginning darker. The light of the world has come into our world and into our souls. We celebrate that in the birth of Jesus. In a few moments, I'm going to light the center candle, which is the Christ candle. As I light it, I want to first read a passage from the book of Isaiah, a prophet that told us about the coming of the light of the world. This is what it says. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. What a beautiful sight to see that wreath and all the lights lit. Would you bow with me as I offer a prayer? Our Lord, we come with full hearts. Through this Advent season, we've been listening and waiting. We've been hearing and deeply longing to experience hope, peace, joy, and love. And tonight of all nights... All those are gathered deeply into our hearts with our families and wherever we are. We celebrate the light that has come into the world and the embodiment of all of those things, hope, peace, joy, and love that makes life worth living. We pray tonight that as we come to the table and as we remember the birth of Jesus, that we would come with hearts full of celebration. What a great and wonderful night. Thank you, Lord for sending your son. We receive him as we celebrate Christmas together. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from Luke chapter two, verses one through 20. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, into the city of David, which was called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. 
ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. May God bless the reading of his word. You may have heard before that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And part of what we're being told when we hear that is that sometimes the, the simplest path is the direct path. It's the best path. And I think that's also true in life. Isn't it that the simplest things are often the best things? As we come to Christmas this year, I'm reminded of the song that is one of my favorites at Christmas. We don't really sing it necessarily in church, but I grew up as a child loving this song. It's based on a story of a little drummer boy. Maybe you know the song. The little drummer boy is a very humble person, comes from humble background, and he hears about this new king who is born. This is Jesus, the Christ, our Lord. He is born in Bethlehem, a place named for house of bread or house of meat or house of nourishment. And so he goes to Bethlehem and he thinks to himself, I have no gift fit for a king. What can I do? In a moment of serendipity, he decides to play a song on his drum for the baby Jesus. In the song, Mary nods approval. And as he plays, at some point, he looks into the manger where the baby Jesus is, and sees Jesus smiling at him. I love that. And it reminds me that the simplest things are often the best things, like a simple song, the gift of a song from your heart, and the gift of a simple smile. And the simplest things are often the best things in life, too. If you think about it, someone to hold your hand when it needs to be held someone to listen to you, maybe a card you get in the mail that just says, I care. Or the little things like opening a Hershey's Kiss and eating that wonderful chocolate or drinking a sip of sweet tea. I like lemon in mine. Or if we walk outside on some of those beautiful days, nothing but blue skies, we would say, not a cloud in the sky and how it lifts our spirits. Or on those days after the rain has come and we see a rainbow and that promise is embedded again in our hearts. It's a simple thing. It means so much. Or, particularly if you're a child, someone coming in and saying, it's snowing. <laughs> How excited we get. And particularly if that might mean no school tomorrow. And in the time we're living now, not seen for over 800 years, the convergence of two great planets, the conjunction of these two planets creating what many of us call the Christmas star. And for me, I think some of the simple things that bring me a lot of joy is coming home to my little dog and his wagon tail. He's always glad to see me and greet me. Many of us as parents remember when our children, when we came home, would say, Mama's home, Daddy's home. Or perhaps it's a phone call. Someone who just decides to call you and you answer and they say, I was just thinking of you. I wanted you to know that. Sometimes the simplest things can be the most meaningful things. And in our scriptures, I think that's also true. 
simple acts of goodness and kindness and compassion and of great love and simple things that we hear in Scripture. They often mean the most to us, don't they? Like, love one another just as I have loved you. You are forgiven. You're a child of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I am the light of the world. It is finished. And he is risen. As we come to Christmas, I hope that you and I will remember that the simplest things are often the best things. And the first Christmas was very simple. A baby was born. He was laid in a feeding trough we call a manger, born in a cave or a stable. There was no room anywhere else for him or his family. I imagine there were animals there, straw. He was wrapped in swaddling clothes. The visitors were just ordinary shepherds who were keeping watch over their flocks by the night near Bethlehem, that house of bread, that place of nourishment. And Mary was there, of course, and she pondered it all in her heart and treasured it for the rest of her days. That's a simple story, the story of Christmas. And in a lot of ways, I hope that's enough for us to remember. You know, this year, <laughs> well, this year has also impacted our Christmases. I did not anticipate our Lord's Supper on Christmas Eve, the candlelight communion at Trinity, in a room with very few people here, a few staff. And none of us anticipated how it might impact our Christmases and our gatherings with our own families. We have great plans often for Christmas. And so this year, I hope that we will remember the simplicity of Christmas and Perhaps that will be enough. I think it is enough. The simple message of Christmas. Unto us, a child has been born. Unto us, a Savior has been given. He is Christ the Lord. And isn't that quite enough? This child grew up among us. He taught us. He loved us. He healed us. And he guided us. And on his very last night, he sat at a table with his good friends. And he left us two very simple things by which we could remember him always. Take bread, he said, broken bread. Take it and eat it, for this is my body. Take a cup filled with wine. The new covenant of salvation is in this cup. It is my blood poured out for you. Take it and drink it. And so we come to this table tonight with these two simple things before us. And we remember the simplicity of Christmas and the simplicity of a life lived and given for you and me. And I believe it's enough to bring us great joy. Sometimes the simplest things are the best things. Merry Christmas to you. As we gather at this table, I invite you now to get the elements you have at home as we partake of these simple things that Jesus left us to remember him by. The child born in Bethlehem, the house of bread and nourishment. The child who grew, who lived and died for you and me. At that last night of his life, at a table with his friends, he took some bread. And having blessed it, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Would you pray with me? Oh, our God, we are so happy tonight to celebrate the birth of your son. We are grateful to receive this simple bread as a reminder of, of everything he stood for, everything he still stands for. We take it into our bodies and we remember that we are called to be the body of Christ in this world, 
even in the simple ways that we choose to do it. We pray your blessings on us on this Christmas Eve as we take and eat. Amen. I invite you now to take the bread and remember that this is the bread that came down from heaven. Those who eat of it, though they die, yet shall they live. Take and eat. In the same way, he took a cup, and having poured wine into it, he said, This is my blood, which is poured out for many. I'll lift this cup now as we pray. Our God, this is chilling for me. As I lift this cup, we remember that he talked about blood. He talked about sacrifice. But it was a sacrifice of love, and so I choose to remember his great love. The love of a person who called us friends. The love of a person who calls us to a better life. The love of a person who chooses to reach to us and offer us salvation. So we drink this cup. Joyfully we drink it tonight. The night that he was born, when light and hope and love came into the world. We drink this cup. In his name. Amen. So now take your cup. And remember that this is the cup of salvation. This cup represents the blood of Christ. Shed for the remission of all our sins. Take and drink. The table says... This do in remembrance of me is very simple, just like the birth of our Lord. We are told that as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we do help to remember our Lord and to proclaim his life and his salvation until the day he comes again. May it be so of all of us. Amen. I'll invite you now to take either your glow stick or a candle or whatever light you have. Our tradition is to remember the light of the world on Christmas Eve. And even as the world seems so dark, and it indeed it is dark at night, we light this candle or we break the glow stick. We lift the light as a reminder of the coming of Jesus and the great hope it gives us. If you have a glow stick, you'll simply take it and just crack it open. Just crack it enough for the light to shine. And you may have a candle. I'll have both of these with me tonight. I'm going to take the candle and light it from the Christ candle. Taylor's going to lead us in singing that wonderful song, Silent Night. As we sing together tonight, we will sing the first verse of Silent Night twice through, and on the second verse, we invite you to raise your light together. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly
Thank you, Taylor. And thank you for joining us for this wonderful Christmas Eve communion in 2020. I like to close, as I've done for many, many years, on our Christmas Eve communion service with a blessing from one of my favorite stories written by Charles Dickens, and many of you know, A Christmas Carol. Tiny Tim is the one who says it. And I'd like to offer this blessing to all of us watching and those all around the world. May God bless us, everyone. Amen. Good night. Thank you.